Parks. Parks. Parks House. Parks House. In your eardrum. Scooter Rocks. Man, wherever you want me to be. You're now listening to Harps House. To Harps House. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to Harps House. I'm your host, Jonathan Harper, and I'm here with a friend of mine, Christian Crockett. How you doing today, Christian? Hey, guys. I'm good. How are you? <laughs> and Christian is a certified personal trainer, and she was also a finalist on Social Star Search on NBC's The Today Show. She's also a Zumba instructor and a personal trainer. And she's uh, getting her following up. She's, she's getting it popping. She's got 9,000 followers on Instagram, and she's also a host of fitness-related boot camps and cardio classes. So, Christian, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Thank you. I'm good. I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm excited to talk to you and your listeners. So, so let's let's get it. So, so tell some of my listeners what it was like for you when you decided to, you know, leave your job in public relations to pursue your your passion of personal training full time. So, I always had this idea of climbing the corporate ladder, um, which is why, you know, I was like, okay, I'm going to go to grad school, then I'm going to get out, get a corporate job. Like that just seems like what I was supposed to do and then I you know landed a few corporate gigs and I just kept realizing that even though I was doing work that I was good at it felt like no matter where I was whether I liked the company or not I was counting down to Friday dreading Monday and I found like I made time to put fitness first and you know people were asking me questions all the time about fitness and nutrition and things like that and I just I just had to go with my gut and realize I'm so passionate about this like there is no way that I can I can go wrong really if I just follow my heart. And what was the response like from your friends and family when you finally made the leap to do it full time? Well, of course, my my mom was like, wait. At first, she was a little hesitant and she was like, um, so or do you have a backup plan or <laughs> right. you just got to just go, go for it? Right. And I, I just had to convince them, like, listen. I really love this and I really just want to do it. Just trust me um, and and let me fly and and it's going to it's going to be okay. And they were I think they were coming from my standpoint of but you work so hard in school and, you know, you got your master's and you're supposed to come out and, you know, do what the American, you know, kind of system set you up to do. Right. And I didn't want to go that route. So, so they were, they were very supportive, but they were hesitant at first. Gotcha. And just so you guys know, Christian was at Newhouse when I was there at the same time. She got her master's in PR. I got mine in broadcast journalism. So, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So how did you get involved with uh, NBC and the Today Show? Can you tell some of my listeners about that? Yeah, so one of my uh, peers from undergrad, she ended up um, working for NBC, and we haven't really kept in touch that much, but there was a contest that um, they had came out with, and she reached out to me and was like, oh my God, I don't know why I didn't tell you about this. Like, I told to my mind, she said, the contest deadline is over, but you should really think about entering it. And she sent me the link, and I was like, oh my God. I literally had a day to come up with this video to basically convince them, like, hey, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to build a brand on social media, and like, inspire people through fitness and of about fitness through Instagram and um they were like we'll come up with the video send it to us and we'll see what you know we'll see what happens wow. so I made, I made this little video up and I tried to be as creative as I could I sent it to them and I just kind of left it at that like I didn't think at all that I was going to get chosen especially because it was past the deadline and the girl who you know kind of told me about it was like you know I'm not sure what they're going to say but it's worth a shot so I went for it and next thing you know like I got a phone call and they told me that I won it and I was in complete shock wow. I was like, what no yeah. they're like yeah we're going to fly you to LA next week I was like whoa what <laughs> right wow and in LA, you got a chance to meet your mentor. I don't want to pronounce her name wrong. It's Masi Arias, correct? That was at VidCon in Los Angeles, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, Masi Arias. A lot of people know her as Manko or uh, Manko Fit on Instagram. She changed her name, but um, she literally like has helped me. Granted, I knew about branding and growing a font like that. 
well, you can be taught how to do that in school and everything else, but she really taught me how to personalize my myself in terms of fitness and my brand and sh- just her in general, like her personality, her her drive, her passion, like that in itself resonates. And she's just she was such an inspiration for me outside of the contest so to be able to work with her hand in hand and like travel to new york and get to you know collaborate with her like that was awesome now she looks kind of intense on that video is she really (laughs) passionate like that in real life (laughs) she a lot of people i think maybe may take her as oh my gosh she's extreme she's she's very very passionate and very dominant when it comes to you know putting out how she feels about things and and pursuing her her dreams and really going after like she doesn't expect or she she holds her holds herself to a high expectation and so it's very type a and she is just it, she's just that she she's very passionate and so when you're around her it's like oh my god like this girl is really what she she appears to be like she's not just you know doing this Right. amazing stuff on social media just for show like this right. is her life right and i see you're certified by the national academy of sports medicine now how important how important was that for you to get certified versus just giving tips and training exercises uh and telling people what to eat it's important um mostly because it, it adds credibility one um it, it shows that you're educated in your field, just like any certification degree or diploma or anything like that. It shows that you you took the time to, you know, really invest in your education because if you're not educated, how are you expected to educate others? Right. And granted, you know, you can self-educate all day, but that, that certification connects you with other like-minded people who are in the training field, can get you jobs um, that require the certification, and it adds credibility to your education. So were you an athlete growing up? I did sports in high school and like middle school, like, you know, when I was younger. Right, so right. granted, you know, I didn't do college sports or anything like that, but I always, I was always active, but not into fitness as much as I am now. Okay. So yeah. What made you want to be a personal trainer? I guess you would say in the first place. You know, what? it's, it's funny because I really didn't get big into, like, nutrition until I got to grad school. And I'm not sure what that switch was. Maybe it's just so cold in Syracuse. There's nothing else to do (laughs) but stay in the house. So um, I remember. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) I cooked a lot. um, And I really got into eating whole foods. And I saw the way that it transformed my body. And so that really in itself was how I really got invested in learning more about the human body and that just grew and so when people started asking me questions they were more so asking me about nutrition and that just kind of collaborated with fitness and it just became you know one big one big deal gotcha what if some of what have uh some of your biggest hurdles you've come across so far you know, owning your own business and, and getting into fitness and running your own, like I said, your own business full time? I think um, learning what I'm good at and, and coming to terms with what I'm not and either accepting that and getting someone to help me to do it or learn to get better at it for my for myself for example like scheduling little things like that um you know time management is huge especially when I have you know maybe have 20 30 clients I have to keep track of each week sending out um you know information meal plans homework Mm. I call it homework with really workouts um keeping up with all of that and then personal training is is really a business about people like anyone I won't say anyone. Most people can be a trainer if they're knowledgeable about fitness and anatomy and nutrition. But learning to work with people and really figuring out what makes people tick, how people stay motivated, that in itself is a very, like, it's a hard skill to learn or can be if you're really not naturally a people person. And I am. um, I am naturally a people person. But it really had took me some time to figure out, like, okay, how, what are certain people's quirks? Like, how can I work with them to keep them motivated and keep them on track? Gotcha, gotcha. That makes sense. Well, let's take a quick break at Harp's house, and when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about how important it is for you and your, and your friends and family to stay in shape and eat right. Again, we'll be right back here on Harp's house. 
Thanks for sticking around at Harp's House. I'm your host, Jonathan Harper, here with fitness instructor Kristen Crockett. Now, Kristen, uh, I was looking up some stats before I brought you on the show because I wanted to have my stuff together. According to the CDC, it says that more than one third, so that's about 36.5% of U.S. adults are obese. Now, some of the uh, obesity-related conditions include heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes, and certain types of cancer. Now, Chris, why do you think fitness and nutrition is so important today to try and get those numbers under control? It's extremely important because, for one, I think we live in a culture where overconsumption is a big issue and processed foods to, to, in order to feed the amount of people in this country, you know, is a big de- is a big thing. So with all the, the additives to our food, um, you know, the hormones and, and not even to mention, you know, the processed sugar and the fat and things like that. You know, diseases are popping up left and right, and people don't really realize it until they get older or, you know, they, they, they're they eating themselves into obesity. So and when focusing on fitness, it's not just about really running or, you know, working out or things like that. You have to take control of the things that you're putting in your body. And if you don't focus on both, um, you know, it's kind of obsolete, like, You could train all day long, but if you're eating crap, it's not going to help you in the long run. Right. And talk about a little bit how important, like you said, making those small changes to correct and and that you would say have better habits. How important is that to, like you said, uh, leading a healthier lifestyle? It's one of the most important, if not the most important thing, because, you know, there's a lot of trends out here where it's like, oh, do the... 30 day cleanse or the 25 day fast or whatever you have. When you put a time limit on something that's so important to your life as far when it comes to health, that that's the mindset that becomes almost counterproductive because you need to really focus on changing your lifestyle, especially if you, if you've built habits that are going to, you know, put you in a situation where you're unhealthy, those are difficult to come out of. So focusing on something that's long-term, that's going to be um, effective for your health overall, that's the most important thing um, that comes with fitness and nutrition. Gotcha. Now, trainers and nutritionists seem to typically be really busy. Now, tell me and tell some of my listeners, what's a typical day like for you in terms of your routine with your food and your fitness and like your just your, your overall time schedule? Oh, my gosh. Well, I, mean, I think anyone can agree that there's not enough time in the day. You know, we're all busy. Um, for me, it's I, I didn't add this, but I'm a competitor also. So I do bodybuilding and Food, oh, first of all, food is very important anyway, but when you're bodybuilding, you're trying to grow and retain muscle, it's so crucial to get your timing about your food down as well as your workouts. Mm-hmm. And so for me, um, I have to do fasted cardio in the morning, which means I have to get up as soon as I wake up and do my cardio. And so <laughs> because my clients start at 5 a.m., I have to get that in before way beforehand so sometimes i wake up usually around 3 30 maybe 4 that's pushing it but to get my cardio in get home and shower to go back to the studio i train at and train my clients between 5 a.m to around noon or 1 30 and then between then you know it, it sounds great i'm done at 1 30 but i have to get my work done and things that i need to catch up on between one thirty and about 5 because owning your own business never stops like you don't you don't have a off day right. and you know if i have evening clients that means my day starts right back up at 5 p.m. and i'm training till probably 8 and during that whole day i'm eating every 3 hours so all my food is with me Mm-hmm. And once I'm done with my clients, I have to finish my night. Guess what? <laughs> my workout and cardio. So it can get pretty hectic. <laughs> and, and how many days a week do you try and uh, maintain that routine? Every day, except for Sunday. Sunday is my day where I can just kind of breathe a little bit, get my get my life together, right. and, get, and get organized. Right. 
And why do you think, like you said, uh, you've kind of established that routine for yourself in terms of establishing a routine of success. Why do you think it's so hard for people to to break that cycle of of bad eating and just being uh, sedentary, just kind of sitting around? Because with any habit, it takes time to build. And if you spend time building that habit, it's going to spend it's going to take time breaking it. And so that's why I always tell my clients and my students, you really have to take it one day at a time and don't pressure yourself so much that you, you might not have worked out today or you might not have, you know, had such a healthy diet today because you, you spent time building these habits. So taking it one day at a time really helps you getting to get into the habit of eating healthy and, and adding fitness into your life. Gotcha. Now, give me your thoughts. Are you big on these new pop-up fitness classes? I've seen some trainers on Instagram where they say they'll have like a pop-up class in the in the park for like five bucks on a Saturday morning. Or do you think that's not as effective for as having, uh, like you would say, a personal trainer or going to a traditional gym? What do you What are your thoughts on those those classes? I say the more the merrier. Honestly, if you're encouraging people to get out of the house and and do something active, like I am all for it. As long as it's not causing anyone any physical harm or mental harm, right. like go for it. I think that's I think that's dope. Gotcha. All right, we're going to take another time out here on Harp's House and when we come back with Chris, she's going to talk about what motivates her to help others here at Harp's House. We'll be right back. And we're back at Harp's house, and I'm your one and only host, Jonathan Harper, here with Kristen Crockett. She's a fitness instructor and a certified personal trainer. Now, Chris, what motivates you uh, to succeed? What motivates me is seeing people who think that they might not be able to do something actually reach the point where they they do it. Like, helping people really get a a habit down to where they create a lifestyle change that motivates me every day when my clients or my students are like really down about you know where they are in life or where they are fitness wise or nutrition wise and they start off really just like I don't know if I can do this when they when they reach small wins each week or they lose some weight or they you know start changing their habits to see them make those changes and end up you know, being a better them, that that just keeps me going. Gotcha. That makes sense. Uh, now, with your other fellow trainers and people you work out with, do they have similar goals, like you said, just helping people to succeed and become a better them? Yeah, I, I am honestly blessed to have been surrounded by so many positive people. Um, you know, I, I push out a lot of positive energy, and I think that, I, because of that, I receive it back, and I, I know that there are trainers out there who are just in it for the money, gotcha. and I won't blame them because, I mean, it is good money in it, but at the same time, the really good trainers are the ones who genuinely care, and they really want to help, and it's not even about the paycheck. I gotcha, I gotcha. Now, all of my guests who come on Harp's House take, uh, I call it like a virtual tour that gives my listeners kind of an inside look and an inside feel as to who you are as a person. So you, you ready to get it going? I am ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you could only have three albums playing in your house, what albums would they be? Of all time or just All like time. Now? What? Okay, first of all, I'm not a music person by any means. Okay. Um, I could probably turn on Pandora and be good. So, gotcha. Um, but if I had to pick now, I would say... Um, Janae Aiko, Sail Out. I really love her. She's so adorable. Um, probably Drake, Thank Me Later. Okay. Um, and Jay, Jay-Z Blueprint. Okay, I, I, I could deal with those three. Are you, <laughs> are you a fan of art or any type of photography? I am a very big fan of my best friend who's an artist. Her name's Taylor Shawnee. She follow her on Instagram. Okay. <laughs> um, she's like a hidden treasure. Oh my goodness. She's, she's an amazing artist. Um, as far as photography, this is a random little tidbit that I like to do. I like to go on, um, 
Instagram and just type in different cities photographers. And so I'll type in Charlotte, that's where I live, Charlotte Photography, and look at, I think, local photographers, like small people who don't have a big name. There's so much hidden talent out here. There's a guy I follow on Instagram named um, Mr. Carrie J. King. Okay. <laughs> phenomenal and then um there's another girl in atlanta who i found on the same hashtag thing her name is essence ransom and i actually found her and she's done a few photo shoots of mine and she's like 20 years old but mad talented so, ah that's dope yeah <laughs> so what kind of posters did you have on your wall when you were growing up as a kid oh my god i was such a little like boy band fan girl. <laughs> um, i had B2K, <laughs> <laughs> which is funny to say. Right. Um, B2K, IMX, I loved them, and um, 3LW. Those are my girls. <laughs> Those. That's a that's a random little uh, <laughs> group of three. Remember those um, J14 magazines? Right. I used to. I used to like buy those just for the little inserts and like have them up on my wall. The pull out. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> Now, who who was your hero growing up? Oh, man. My hero? My mom. Um, That might be cliche to say, but seriously, my, I used to think my mom was, some, like, superwoman. Like, she would do any and everything to get things done, and I would just be like, man, like, I just want to be like her. My mom's my best friend. And so seeing her grow up, I know cause it has contributed greatly to, like, the person I am today, and uh, that was definitely my hero. And what advice would you give to your uh, childhood self? Hmm. Don't put too much pressure on yourself um, and don't overthink things because as long as you have faith and you keep that strong, like everything's going to work out for itself. Gotcha. And if you were to live in any television family growing up, which one would it be? Oh, man. It would have to be a mix between... <laughs> this is really like like extreme ends, but probably the Cosby's. I mean, who wouldn't want to be a part of the Cosby family? Right. And, and the Prowl family. <laughs> what? I know. <laughs> That's so random, but seriously, I was like, oh man, they have such a cool family. Like, yeah, the Prowl family. <laughs> and and w when you were growing up, what did you envision yourself being, you know, around this time? What did you want to be when you grew up? Well, I think I started off with, like a lot of kids with the doctor thing. I was like, oh, I'm going to be a doctor when I grow up. But I knew I wanted to help people. Mm -hmm. And so when I got into like a realistic stage of my life, I was like, I'm going to be a sports agent. I'm going to be this like big PR mogul and I'm going to climb the corporate ladder. Like that was my thing. And I couldn't even imagine um, doing that right now. Right. Um, but, you know, that those were my dreams at one point. And where do you see yourself in 10 years? Man, on a yacht, chilling in uh, in Jamaica somewhere. <laughs> like in ten years, I'm honest. Like just being honest, I hope to be retired in ten years. Mm -hmm. Like I want to grind so hard in in my twenties and my thirties to the point where I'm forty years old and I'm good. Gotcha. And what's the best piece of advice you received growing up? Oh, let's see. Growing up. I think someone told me, don't ever put yourself in a position that you can't get out of. And so it's been something that I, I value because I won't put myself in a, in a place where I don't think, you know, I could dig myself out of it. So whether that's um, professionally, financially, or anything like that, it, I'm always prepared. Like, I'm always ready. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> and then last but not least, uh, what advice would you give to a young trainer out there trying to make it like you are? Never feel entitled. Entitlement is a disease. Like, you will sink if you feel that someone owes you anything. And that's a trainer or not, but more so for trainers, because um, I think some people can get caught up in um, popularity sometimes. Okay. And it's important for you to really just humble yourself, work hard, don't be entitled, and, and earn your respect. Gotcha. Now give us all your social media contact information and one nugget of advice 
uh, before before we leave on this note? Of course. So you can follow me on any social media handle at Get Fit with Chris, G E T F I T with C H R Y S. And um, I, I I like to follow people back. So definitely feel free to follow me and DM me if you have any questions or need any advice or anything fitness and nutrition related. And as far as advice, um, I think my best advice to people is always follow your gut. Follow your gut and follow your passion. Because if you don't have something in your life that you feel that that's going to help you stay driven, you're going to be in a monotonous cycle of, of, I don't want to say disappointment, but a lack of maybe motivation. So you have to find that one thing that really keeps you going and really like put, put your energy into it. You never know where it'll go. Gotcha. Well, thanks Chris for taking the time. And again, I'm your host, Jonathan Harper. You can follow us on Instagram. I am Harper. That's on Twitter. That's on uh, Instagram. And also you can follow Harps House. That's Harps House one at Gmail. If you want to email us, Again, that's Harps House One, uh, and that's at Gmail. Or you can again follow that's HarpsHouse.com, or you can subscribe in the iTunes Store as well as the Google Play Store. You can also uh, look and listen on YouTube as well. So again, I'm your host Jonathan Harper. Thanks for taking the time, and we'll be back with somebody special the next time. Take care.